good day. Hope everyone's good. Hope everyone's fine and dandy. Today we're going to be looking at something I come across. Well, basically I was doing a video first on India and the star forts, missing star forts of India. And uh, basically I was putting a video together and it's like two hours long. And there weren't no story to it, you know, I was just going around on Google Earth. And I thought, well, I'm going to delete it. And about halfway after I deleted it, I come across these electrical devices that generate electric through the water from your kitchen tap. So we're going to have a look at all this. But this is a building I worked in, and it is £1 billion, and it's called the Bloomberg Building in London. And I worked in the basement for about six months, six stories down in the basement. And basically, what I'm saying is, I've never, what I come across, being a plumber, I look into all sorts of stuff like this, and I've never come across it before. That's why I was interested. And it, it sort of blew me away. But it all sort of fits the story that we, uh, we're told and the story that we're telling you know obviously a lot of stuff's being hidden from us and that's what we're uncovering but what i found is interesting and i'm going to show you electricity from your kitchen tap unbelievable big up james coista for that donation by the way mate maximum respect let's get stuck into it Few people in the Western world realise that they have an extra power source available in their household, workshop or factory, and that's the water, the tap water. Just before the arrival of electricity, at the end of the 19th century, water motors were widely used in Europe and America. These miniature water turbines were connected to a tap and could power any machine that is now driven by electricity. Water has been the main intimate source of mechanical power from antiquity right up to the beginning of the 20th century. Although most water wheels were located at the banks of the rivers or in the rivers itself, some were set up at considerable distances from the water source. This was made possible by the introduction of hydraulic power transmission, a process by which water from a steam is led through artificial water courses to water wheels built on the land. To support hydraulic power transmission, man-made channels or power canals or aqueducts could be dug into the earth or carved out of the rocks. They could also be elevated structures whose walls were raised above the surrounding terrain. Water reservoirs formed by dams could be integrated into these power transmission networks. Regulating water flow, providing power storage for times when water was running low and increasing the head or waterfall of the vertical overshot water wheel. The use of the power canals increased throughout the medieval period and became widespread in the 1500s. And that just goes to prove why we have all these man-made canals now. We've got millions of miles of man-made canals and it's just, it is for hydraulic uh, water wheels and penton wheels and things like that. So it's a network, a power network. In the mid 19th century, many European and American cities introduced a more sophisticated water distribution system, the public water supply. Although this introduction was an answer to health concerns, it became more quickly obvious that the potable water sent through the pipelines of the public water supply could also provide motive power. Water wheels were still the main important source of mechanical power in the early days of the public water mains. Most European and American cities had running water before they had electricity, so there was a market for a compact power, support, power source that could be used in the city. In the town mains, the role of the aqueducts or power canals is taken over by a much more intricate network of pipelines. 
This prevents debris from entering the water and makes uphill water transport easier. Water piping technology was used in some ancient civilizations, but the 19th century systems introduced some lasting innovations. First of all, thanks to the screw tap, which was patterned in 1845, the water supply could easily be regulated. Second, the water could verbally be distributed inside individual buildings, often reaching multiple rooms at several floors. At any of these spots, all you had to do, receive motive power from the town mains, was connected to a small water turbine to the tap. So just to recap, there was a high pressure water supply, potable water, and in the 1850s, a device come about that you could connect to a tap and it would run through a penton wheel and that would generate electricity through a dynamo. So you'd get electricity from your tap water. And that's free electricity as well. You don't pay for it, you're just paying for your water. So have a look at these little devices. There's not much online either about these. So let's have a little look see. Uh, this is the one I come across. You can have a look. That's the exhaust at the bottom. The Pelton. So that had the Pelton wheel inside. Big machines as well. But these powered washing machines, sewing machines, vibrators. <laughs> I've got all this to show you. So the water entered, obviously, like I said, the wheel spun, generate electricity. Here we go. And this is inside, this is one of them opened. So I'm guessing the cable would have come from the little spigot coming from the top. So that's where the water enters. Spins the wheel. and generates enough electricity to power household stuff. See, we're not taught about this. We're not told about any of this. All these little devices get covered up and brushed under the carpet. It's because you can't make money out of it, that's why. It's like I heard a story about the light bulb the other day. Apparently the first light bulb that came out was meant to actually lasted a very long time. So the, the, the people selling them were only seeing the customer once. So all the electrical engineers got together and made an agreement to make the light bulbs last a shorter amount of time. So they kept getting repeat custom a lot more often. Similar to this, we'll get rid of this. We'll, we'll build up some complex network with power stations and generating stations and dams and make out it's some real technology going on charge the people through the roof that's what's happened there's another one see some of them had uh, wheels on it with belts and they drove like this here so this one was driving a sewing machine you can see how this one works and then some of them were used by dynamos, like this one. So the water entered on a tube at the bottom, spun the wheel, and then exited on the tube next to it. And this is a fan powered by water. And here's one recovered from somewhere. It's amazing how it's still in good nick. But that's what I'm doing. For the last week, I've dedicated my life to learning about electrics and electromagnetics and stuff like that. Because I'm going to make a free energy device myself. And I've already got some motors upstairs, electromagnetic motors that I've took apart. And we'll see where we end up with this, eh? But look, the Whitney, the water motor, scientific exchange. 117 City Road. 
This tells you the power and the speed and the water pressure. And this is the massager. And um, on the advert, it can actually be used as a vibrator as well to pleasure women. I'm not joking. So you plug it in to the tap. And obviously the dynamo would generate through the pen because of the penton wheel. Now look, let's have a look, see what it says. It's massage vibrator. Let's have a look at it. See how it's connected? And then you've got the cable coming from it. After shaving, nothing like it. So here is the perfect massage vibrator for your home at a fair price. No complicated and expensive electrical device, but good old fashioned water power from your bathroom faucet. Driven by the famous Little Wonder water motor, which articulates articles directly to your bathroom faucet. Never gets out of order. Cost of operation is nothing. Best of all, it's in your own home to be used when you like. For the man, the hydro messenger, messenger after his morning shave, would forego the delightful exhilaration and wide awake feeling which follows. Its regular use will save your hair, if anything will. <laughs> of the woman, the hydro messenger, messenger, massage. Among her toilet assets needs the fear returning birthdays. Smooths out lines and wrinkles as if it's by magic and leaves the skin soft and attractive. So that's how they sell it, beauty. Interesting. Things are sold by sex now. I suppose it is a form of, you know. But it's interesting, eh? Plug it up to your tap and you've got an electrical device, free electrical device, Divine Red Devil Water Motor. And this advert basically just tells you uh, what you can do with it, what, what sort of um, appliances and what benefits you can do with it and what sort of trades benefit from it as well. So you can see that it used to clean out bottles and I always wondered that as a kid, like how did you clean these bottles out? Especially the old milk bottles. There you go, that's how you did it. So carpenters, it just tells you how it, it, it chisels, planes, bits, butchers, it grinds, cleavers, jewelers, it polishes, caterers, grocers. So it's trying to get into all these markets, you can see. It's trying to say it can benefit all of these sort of trades. So it's fully about, it must have been a big wide thing, but I never heard of it till the other day and if you see by the beginning of the video I'm into that sort of stuff that's what I do with um, a living like plumbing pipes mechanical stuff I love it and I've never come across that sort of stuff before the price four pound four four dollars for the whole lot Bottle washing attachment, 50 cent. Very interesting, eh? And there's a devil. Look at that. Sharpening his towel. What a coincidence. Laughing. The red devil, do your work. Let the red devil do your work. six inch motor improved construction absolutely perfect runs your washing machine and a hundred other things power for small tools let's just say let's have a look it's just saying what it powers but it's quite interesting isn't it look this one has a dynamo on it because it's got no pulleys But if you pause, you can have a look. It goes into a bit of detail about it, about the different models they've got. Because this is from a catalogue. It's incredible. 
free electricity from your water supply in your kitchen tap. I knew it was a fraud. I knew all this energy electric was a fraud. I knew it. And the more I'm looking into it, the more I'm realising. So this is a diagram. This is a... The design was intended for home construction. Here, the jet of the water points downwards. Here, the motor appears to be geared about eight times down to rock a developing tray for photographic plates. The water exhaust is then ingeniously used for washing the developed plates. And this little beauty was called a duchess and this peels potatoes and it had no handles to turn. The Duchess potato material peels up to two pounds in one minute. Gets rid of all the dirt, there's no cleaning involved and there's no handle to turn. Simply fix tube to your sink tap and turn on the water. In strong streamlined plastic cream color transparent lid, rubber suction featuring guaranteed. So that's four pound, four, yeah, four pounds seventeen. There you go. That's one of the appliances. It's mental, isn't it? I don't think this one had a dynamo in it. Though. I just purely think it was done by water. Like the pressure of the water just spun round. And here's one. I think this is a modern day version. Someone's made one. So you can see, the connection reminds me of when I was um, a kid, and I used to be in the bath. I used to have the council, the council showers that used to plug on. Again, this is another water-powered uh, food mixer. This doesn't have a dynamo, so this is generated just by just by water. And it's an ingenious device, apparently supported solely by its attachment to the tap. By 1937, many houses in Great Britain were connected to an electrical supply, and the market must have been shrinking fast. Interestingly, they are described as water turbines rather than water motors, perhaps because it sounded more up to date. So I'd like to know what happened here, like what changed these people's minds because you had free electricity from a device from your kitchen tap and then they go around, dig everything up, build all these power plants, spend all this money and create some false perspective about electricity and charge you for it. Well, that's what the, that's what the uh, that's what the plan's been basically. This video here just tells you like you had free electricity. Um, now you have to rely on other companies and governments for the electricity, and if you don't pay the bill, it, you get cut off. This is this is the main reason why I'm learning about free energy now because I want to go off grid. I've had enough of living in this matrix. So I want to learn how to make my own electricity and I need to clean my own water and I want to educate myself in permaculture and then I want to get the heck out of here. I'm going to be looking for a community or something to move to because it's going to get nasty in this matrix, I'm telling you. Anyway, the Hydronimo, British manufacturer. So look at this little beauty specially designed for accumulators from the cellular tap works well on pressure of 45 pounds and over best finish ring oil in bearings solidity built communicator complete ready for use with hose price three pound each hundreds in use satisfaction every time so there you go, it just connects up to the tap and the dynamo does its magic and you get electricity. You can see why they got rid of these because once you've got this, that's it. You've got electricity for life. Free. Right, the cost of your water up at Turb turbine driven dynamos so these would have been like I did on the last video in power stations just 
it's like this. And this is another one. Very interesting machinery. And we've got this one here. So this has got the plug one. You plug it in. Exhaust at the bottom. Let's have a look at this. John J. Griffin and Son. Water motors. So they have a clamp. You have an inlet and an outlet. Or an inlet and an exhaust with the clamp. Improved pattern in which completes illustration of the water pressure is obtained. The power of the water turbines is considerably increased by using a straight escape pipe as long as possible. Every bend or break reduces the efficiency of the turbine. You can have a look at these. That's quite interesting. And really, how long were these about? Like everything pops up in the mid 1850s, but how long were these really about? Here's one. Salvaged. I'll tell you I'll tell you something else. What they're doing now is when I was researching this stuff, I found some mini hydro power plants. And I'm gonna show you now. Or in a minute I'm going to show you. So this was even the fire bell. So when the fire alarm rung. And the sprinklers went off. It also let the fire alarm off. Water motion alarm. It's got a little strainer on the left hand side. And here's one integrated into the wall. So that bit of exhaust at the bottom. So behind that wall would be water flowing through a penton wheel. Now check this out. The water doesn't need to be very deep, nor the current very strong. Only enough for the small rotor blade to float free in the water. Its inventors say Blue Freedom is the world's smallest hydroelectric power plant. It takes just minutes to assemble. Once placed into moving water, the turbine transfers the energy to a mini generator in the shape of a ring. The ring then just needs to be secured on a stick nearby. The electricity is stored in batteries. It certainly looks easy enough. It is easy. You just need a stick and you're away. And there you have your mini hydro power plant. The advantage is that you can take it anywhere. Any time I need electricity, I get out my blue freedom and generate whatever I need. With a river, it's very easy, because the density of the water is a thousand times greater than that of air. So you can keep the equipment really small and still have immense power. That's the beauty of it. So there you have it. 1850s is when it was said to have come about. Then you got brushed under the carpet around just after World War Two, And now they're slowly coming out now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Donating. Thanks for everything. It means the moon. Please like and subscribe. Be lucky. One love. Ta-da. Ta-da.